This is Field Sports Channel News. Police in England and Wales are questioning the partners of gun certificate applicants for the first time. In a new tightening of the application process, five police forces, Gwent, the Metropolitan Police, Bedfordshire, Cambridgeshire and Hertfordshire, say they are testing a questionnaire designed to build a more detailed picture of anyone who wants to own a gun, with a particular focus on domestic abuse. The initiative, called Project Titanium, has been developed by Gwent Police with the help of domestic abuse survivors. Police say it has already resulted in applications being refused or existing licenses being revoked. It includes questions such as, would your partner ever hurt an animal? The Scottish Gamekeepers Association is using social media to show the reality of late deer culls. It's posting pictures of red calves still alive after the Scottish Government ordered their mothers shot in the new late season for hinds. The SGA is also fighting new proposals from Green Minister Lorna Slater for Deer Management Nature Restoration Orders, or DMNROs, which allow the courts to fine gamekeepers £40,000, jail them for up to three months and revoke their firearms and shotgun certificates if they don't carry out deer culls. In a consultation in which the SGA refuses to take part, Nature Scott proposes to bill estate owners if a third party has to do the cull. Gamekeepers across England can take a bow for increasing hen harrier numbers. There's been a large increase up from four pairs in 2016 to 50 last year. According to the Hen Harrier Survey, populations of what is one of the UK's rarest birds of prey are now found in Northumberland, the North Pennines, Lancashire and Yorkshire Dales. The RSPB and other organisations carries out surveys every seven years. However, the RSPB does not mention that it's gamekeepers who are bringing the bird back via the Hen Harrier Brood Management Scheme and even uses the survey to attack keepers for raptor persecution, despite persecution convictions being at their lowest level for decades. A squirrel research scientist may have stepped in to kill a grey squirrel, which may have ridden the train to the home of Wales' largest red squirrel population. The animal was spotted by a member of the public on Anglesey in mid-February, who reported it to Red Squirrels Trust Wales. Dr Craig Shuttleworth spent weeks trying to track down the creature, setting up wildlife cameras and traps. He says the greys have found a number of Mission Impossible-style ways of getting to the island, with one even spotted swimming across the Menai Strait. Anglesey's air gunners successfully killed off the greys on the island to make it a stronghold for the Reds. Meanwhile, the disease which greys carry, squirrel pox, has been found in a red squirrel north of Scotland's central belt for the first time. The animal was found near Dunfermline in Fife. The RSPCA must stop releasing seals into the River Neen. That's the plea from the Angling Trust, which wants to limit damage to fish stocks in Peterborough, 30 miles inland. The fishing organisation points to the damage some of the seals are causing that choose to swim inland upon reintroduction. A tagging programme reveals there are five seals in and around the Cambridgeshire town, which is not only bad for local fish, says the Trust, but bad for seals. Shrewsbury Council gave Shropshire Field Sports a Mayor's Award in its annual ceremony. Shropshire Field Sports picked up the certificate in the environment category for the work it does in wildlife management. Tom Matthews and Terry Griffiths say they are delighted with the write-up from their nomination. Unfortunately, they missed the presentation evening because they were out shooting. <laughs> Safari Club International is to sue the US government over elephant trophy imports. The US Fish and Wildlife Service restricted the imports with a new rule in April. SCI recently warned the USFWS that it intended to sue because the service is willfully obstructing elephant conservation in southern Africa, contrary to Congress's mandate that it faithfully enforce the Endangered Species Act and Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species, or CITES. However, rhino horn exports look like they're coming back to South Africa. Widely believed to be the only way to fund rhino conservation, the harmless removal of horn from the animals will supply an export market, including clinics dispensing powdered rhino horn to help tourists from Asia. Along with plans to market zebra, crocodile and other exotic meats for export, boosting local consumption of game and expanding trophy hunting on communal lands, the South African government has announced a national biodiversity economy strategy to make its natural assets pay their way. And finally, 77,000 salmon had a lucky escape after spilling out of a truck. Officials say the 53-foot-long vehicle rolled over a sharp corner in Oregon, USA. 
and ended up on its roof, spilling around 102,000 fish. Luckily, the road was next to the river where the fish were due to be released. Although 25,000 fish didn't make it, most did, and the driver was left with only minor injuries. Thanks to Mark Corney for the story. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts.